When people generally think about high fashion, menswear is often neglected. Rightfully so, because in the menswear fashion stratosphere, it's easy to get bored looking at what's on offer, because it's a lot of the same stuff. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying that because clothes generally look the same. It's because season to season, I see very little change or innovation in menswear from most high fashion brands. And if it's not evolving and looking interesting in what is meant to be the best of men's fashion, then you can imagine how dreadful the men's section is in most fast fashion shops. It makes sense to a point, men's fashion does not sell nearly as well as women's, so there lacks a drive to put as much work into it. I worked at a fast fashion brand whose name sounds like diarrhea, but with less syllables and starts with the last letter of the alphabet. I don't wanna get sued or anything, I don't know what I can and can't say, but the kids section made more than the men's. The women's made at least three times as much. And why doesn't it sell as much? Well, it also has something to do with the mindset of the average male fashion consumer. They don't really demand much, but is that because they don't want more or they don't know what more there is to have? In menswear, it seems like the only progression left is to make things more feminine. And yeah, I guess so, but there's a good and bad way to go about it, in my opinion, of course. Yes, by the way, I'm back in my dungeon. I hope you didn't miss it. I made sure to keep it as messy as ever anyway. One brand in particular that excites me about the prospect of better men's fashion is Mike Amiri. No, it's in the title. It's Jerry Lorenzo Fear of God Essentials. It's Kiko Kostadinov. Let me tell you why. I covered Kiko's come up in my very first ever YouTube video. It's like three minutes, a bit cringe, but it tells you what you need to know. So watch that for a recap on this workhorse of a man. I want to talk about my fascination around him and why he stands out to me amongst the newest slew of slew is that a word and why he stands out to me amongst the newest slew of menswear specific designers that sounds terrible but i'm gonna go with it designers like martin rose bianca sanders or saunders or gregory green even kiko's clothes for me fall into the goldilocks zone of what i love and want in fashion both aesthetically and in his messaging kiko's clothes have artistic substance but for the most part don't look completely absurd to the average person his clothes look familiar but upon deeper inspection there's so much more going on for this video i'm going to discuss his influences, references, and the actual look of his clothes and how they compare to contemporary male fashion. Any Kiko lover like myself will tell you that Kiko's style is modern day uniform and contemporary workwear, which is what comes up when you search what is Kiko Kostadinov style and click this little Dropbox question thing. And while I see the correlation, I don't think that describes him well. Like what comes up when you search contemporary uniform? Little bro decked out in his all Kiko fit first day of school. Honestly, I don't think there is a word or category to describe his clothes. He's made his own style. Kiko spent a long time at Central St. Martin's and one thing that was ingrained in him there was the importance of research to make unique collections and so for every collection he draws on the random things that Kiko or his team encounter and get inspired by. You will get some references to his personal experiences like to his dad's occupation as a construction worker and his own experience of Bulgarian life in Eastern Europe but season to season you really don't know what to expect as the overall feeling. He's built his house codes so to speak but I think he's done it rather than through certain silhouettes or vibes but through certain detailing that just screams Kiko. What I mean is think about any brand's menswear shows, even big ones like Balenciaga, Louis Vuitton, and smaller brands as well. Each season, I kind of have a feeling about what they're going to present in terms of silhouettes and the overall vibe. I honestly don't have a silhouette in mind when I think of Kiko. I think interesting color blocking, very technical pattern work, small lapels, abstract geometric shapes. You can tell a Kiko piece from its uniqueness, from closely analyzing it, not from the overall vibe that it gives, which is a good way to keep your brand low key because it's hard for people to get a clear image of it. The brand is eternally writing and rewriting its house code and the almost childlike curiosity to use things to reference that no one else in fashion is looking at is why Kiko can do this. Things like David Lynch movies, the Kentucky Derby, bodybuilding competitions, and uniforms of ancient armies. Like I'm talking about the Ottoman Empire he referenced in his most recent show. He's not necessarily always looking at art, but reality. And not the everyday clothes that people on the streets wear that Mr. Demna likes to reference, but the interesting parts of reality where fashion is present and interesting, but not really acknowledged in the fashion world. Virgil Abloh had that same curiosity at Louis Vuitton and very much advocated for people to be curious, like children, and I agree with that sentiment. I used to be on the fence about the message behind Kiko's clothes because it seemed like there isn't one. He develops a narrative, but he's very much based in practicality, and artists throughout their career usually like preach one narrative. You won't find an artist that's famous for making all types of art that evokes all types of emotions, right? They usually have a style and their way at looking at life. As I was saying, the emotion and the feeling that Kiko evokes best is curiosity. He himself seems to be an extremely curious person about clothes, not only through obscure reference points, but also in the actual 
actual form and appearance of them, similar to how I think Kanye is when I talked about him. They're both trying to see what's possible, but not in an artistic sense, in a real more practical sense. Kiko is just more formally trained and refined in his vision, so I do like his work a lot more. <laughs> Even the way he shares info about the collection makes you curious. He doesn't give out show notes publicly. The only idea of the references he uses in the shows that we get seems to be through the journalists who talk to him after his show. And all we get is a brief mention of the things, which I sort of like because I always go look up his references myself and I'm amazed by how interesting they are. Still though, it would be nice if you shared the show notes, Kiko. Come on, don't be so greedy. So what I guess I'm saying is I don't think every designer should be a McQueen. I used to have that thought. Why doesn't everyone try to be like him? But I rethought that thought. Everyone has different strengths and I think Kiko plays to his well in evoking my curiosity at least. He also has another brand called Auto 958 which started as an art exhibit with the Moron Moron art gallery but now feels like a Kiko diffusion brand. I made a TikTok about it if you want to learn more but the layout of the website is Tumblr-esque where they show their products that you can buy but also a mix of text, pictures and videos of where the brand draws inspiration from. Being completely honest, I don't think the brand is done that well. The recent stuff seems to only be the products, but it's an interesting concept that deserves more attention from Kiko because I see a lot of potential in it, but not much coming from it right now. I just thought I'd mention it. So look, for references, I find a lot of brands stick within their niche, but Kiko's references come from anywhere and everywhere interesting, which I like and I relate to that view. His niche is interesting things, I guess. <laughs> see, otherwise for me, it gets a bit boring to consume and create if you're always drawing inspiration from like the same place, just trying to get deeper into it or expand your view a little bit in the same area. But let's look at the clothes he makes in the way that the average person would look at clothes, which is without a care in the world for references, right? Only people interested in runway shows and the artistry of fashion care about references. I'm sure there are plenty of buyers out there who don't care about references. I think it's important to look at brands from their aesthetic and cultural significance because I think that's how fashion is viewed by most people, which in turn means that's what is most important about fashion. I think the genius of Kiko's design is its subtlety. I honestly find Kiko's clothes hard to analyze, which is why I think I love them so much, but I'll give it a go. I'm gonna get a little nerdy about his design here. I hope it's interesting. I mentioned before how it seems that the only way to progress menswear these days is through feminizing it. For me, feminine aspects in clothing specifically are aspects that expose more and different parts of skin, but also the body without showing skin, like cinching the waist or just tighter clothing that shows the body but is still covered. Masculine aspects are a lot baggier and loose and squared off. So in order to progress menswear, we need to show men wearing more feminine items. No, I don't think so because I think in straight men specifically, including myself, while I want more variety in the choices I have, I don't want to come off overtly feminine. A little bit sure, you know, you know your boy is getting in touch with his feminine side. I used to never cry. Now, I'm open to tearing up sometimes. <laughs> I think the way to achieve what I want is to blend feminine aspects into menswear subtly without showing skin that is typically associated with women or making it skin tight. So something like this from the Vitamins uh, Spring Summer 23 show. It's androgynous with mostly masculine features, but the crop showing the stomach is way too overpowering. Just a reminder, this is just my opinion. If you disagree, totally get it. I'm speaking only from my perspective as a straight guy who wants to come off mostly masculine, but wants to have more options like women have. So what does Kiko do that I like? He mixes those aspects, but leans towards towards masculinity. For example, in Spring Summer 20, he features these jackets with cinched waists. These are the same jacket, but different colors on different models. Now this model is wearing pants and also has square shoulders. So this looks comes off pretty masculine despite the cinched waist. The jacket is essentially introducing a feminine aspect, but surrounding it with masculine aspects creates an interesting silhouette that represents what I want to be perceived as as well. Now, if we look at this model, the jacket is automatically a lot more androgynous looking. Why? Because the model doesn't have as square shoulders and also isn't wearing pants. So so the jacket also looks more like a dress, but then the way the socks come up and cover most of the leg, I think is a way to trick us stupid men into thinking, yeah, his, his legs are covered like they, they would be in pants. He's, he's pretty much wearing pants. But still, the way this jacket is styled makes it come off a lot more feminine, which is interesting to see. And I like how he shows how the jacket can be styled to highlight different aspects. And both these looks, in my opinion, still convey a masculine look. Like it's kind of like he's giving you the choice to how far you want to take it. In other collections, he also does a lot of deeper necklines than what is typically on men. But then again, he does a good job disguising it. Maybe I'm looking too much into it and stressing the importance of masculinity and femininity too much, but this is genuinely how I feel about menswear. It's like a battle to see how far you can go design-wise while still convincing most men that this is for them and not for an androgynous audience. I'm not against androgynous fashion, but I think it still leaves out most men because menswear has a lot more to go and I think Kiko is doing a good job making progress, slowly but surely. And beyond the masculine and feminine aspects of clothing, Kiko is also subtle in how experimental he goes. He uses traditional silhouettes and is experimental 
experimental with the detailing, which is like another way to trick people into being like, yeah, that's that's cool, but it isn't too out there. I, I could I could rock that. Kiko's clothes aren't as experimental as Rick Owens, but they're still presenting new ideas while being accessible. And I'm the exact target audience for the brand, but I'm broke. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I think I'm more interested in seeing groundbreaking, normal looking fashion than groundbreaking avant-garde fashion. I don't want to see more clothes that a select few people that are in the know will wear. I want to see clothes to elevate regular people's styles, specifically guys, because goddamn, the ratio for good outfits between other genders to men is like 20 to 1. It's, it's, a, it's, it's dismal, man. So how does Kiko's brand fit into the fashion zeitgeist? To be honest, I think the brand isn't that big, but has a really strong following. I think that enforces my point about there being guys who want better fashion for them, because whenever I talk about Kiko, I always see a decent interest. And honestly, I'm surprised there aren't more people making content about it. But at the same time, I'm gonna be real, being a fashion content creator slash influencer is kind of cringe and i would imagine kiko fans are more low-key people <laughs> i am willing to sacrifice myself though to spread his doctrine i also think kiko needs to improve his sub labels i'm not sure how involved he is in afix works anymore it feels like he isn't much and auto 985 is also lacking it kind of feels like it's hard for him to dilute his ideas into a diffusion label he just seems to make it graphic heavy which loses the meaning behind this brand's messaging since he's already making subtle basic clothing how do you make it more subtle and basic like looking at auto there really isn't much that i'm interested in and I think Kiko has a lot of value to offer in men's fashion, but he isn't popular enough to give that value. Gatekeepers will say that's a good thing, but I think that's a bad thing. I would love to see Kiko get more popular. Obviously, it's expensive, so a good diffusion style label would work. I mean, look how popular his ASICs are. Maybe Kiko doesn't want that, though. Who knows? He does. Tell us. Tell us what your goals are, Kiko. Tell us. We want to know. I think I've talked about the most interesting aspects about him. His interesting choices of references, his blending of feminine aspects into menswear, his accessible experimentation. And I didn't mention this, but his color choices. His color choices are amazing. He throws in a couple of full color looks, which is fine. I like them when they're a part of a collection that has more than just one color looks, but his color combinations, oh, incredible. I'm not gonna go into this color psychology because I'm sure that he doesn't do that, but uh, I think he just, he knows that muted colors are the coolest. That's just an uncontestable fact. That's all I have to say about Kiko Kostelinov and why I like his clothes. Please share your thoughts. I'm really curious to know what other people think. As I said, it doesn't seem like there's too much conversation around him, so I'd love to see more opinions about it. This is just mine. Feel free to disagree. Kiko. If you're watching this, reveal your show notes. Take me on as an intern. That's how you can pay me for all this exposure I'm giving you, bro. You owe me. Thanks for watching. Catch you later, alligators.